Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Chamberlain. Madam President, I move that we uh, bring House File 1 off the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Motion is adopted. We have um, House File 1 in, before us, but we have the amendment. Senator Dibble offered the A54 is where we left off. So to the amendment, Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I'd like to impose a call of the House for the uh, balance of the proceedings of this bill. Yeah, it's the Senate. Did you want, or do you run in across the way oh. to impose a call over there? Oh, the, of the Senate, excuse me. <laughs> <We're> all, <laughs> so set the Senate is under call. Huh? Uh, Madam President. Senator Dibble. I move that further proceedings of the roll call be dispensed with and the sergeant at arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The motion is adopted. To the amendment, Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, I would renew uh, uh, moving uh, the A54 amendment. And, uh, Madam President, I think uh, um, uh, when we left off, um, I had asked uh, Senator Chamberlain um, why this was in here and, and, uh, and who, who brought it, and we got a little bit of, uh, of information about that. Um, I just wanted to conclude by saying that I think this is an ill-advised uh, provision. It uh, bars uh, the expenditure of, of any resources for uh, studying the feasibility of planning, designing, engineering, acquiring property, or constructing facilities for related to uh, the development or operation of inner city or inner regional passenger rail facilities between the metro area and Rochester. Madam President, uh, I don't think that is a, a wise course of action um, uh, for uh, just on principle as a matter of policy uh, to prevent uh, even the, uh, the, the thought practically of, of a potential uh, uh, major infrastructure investment like this. Um, uh, so that at least uh, we could obtain good information. We, of course, know that, uh, that you know, the Destination Medical Center is a, an extremely important investment, uh, which this legislature and our state is supporting, um, and it has been well articulated that uh, some, you know, many uh, thousands of, of additional jobs uh, will be generated in, in Rochester. Uh, many of those uh, folks who will be taking those jobs uh, will likely be living up in the metro. Many will be living down in Rochester, of course, but many um, will have uh, family members, spouses and the like, uh, who, who will come here from other places. Um, they'll be uh, living uh, in the cities. Um, the, the amount of pressure that Highway 52 would take. Um, I think the Rochester itself and the DMC folks have articulated the need for uh, more and better uh, options for transit connections that are efficient back and forth uh, between uh, the two. Uh, economic centers between the two regional centers uh, and to not even uh, permit uh, even analysis of this idea um, would undermine uh, what uh, those leaders have articulated, something that we need to look very, very strongly at, uh, really strengthening the connection uh, between the metro, between Rochester. It will support the, uh, I mean, it, it, it's hard to know exactly how that would come out, um, but the totality of the prohibition of even uh, looking at this uh, uh, is, is, is fairly extraordinary in its, in its approach. Um, so, Madam President, I renew my request for a roll call uh, on the uh, A54. And I still had it noted that you had asked for a roll call. Further discussion on the A54 amendment? Senator Chamberlain. Madam President, members, I renew my uh, earlier request that you vote no on this. Uh, if the amendment goes on, you will most likely not have a tax bill. No tax bill if the amendment goes on. Vote no. Further discussion on these? Senator Dibble. Madam President, to that point, I just want to uh, point out that this is a policy provision only, um, and it would have no effect on the spreadsheet or the bottom line, um, and, and should not affect the outcome or the fortunes of the tax bill. Um, it's, a, it's a policy provision. I don't even think it belongs. In, in a bill like this, it belongs more in a, in a transportation bill. I don't know what it's even doing here, 
um, but it uh, simply won't even show up on the spreadsheet or affect its policy matter. Further discussion? Seeing none, the Secretary will take the roll on the A54 amendment. All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 25 ayes and 36 nays, the amendment is not adopted. <laughs> Further discussion on, the, on House File 1. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to uh, speak about a provision in the bill. Um, it's on page 179, section 23, and it's a provision for lodging tax in Sleepy Eye. Um, uh, when I look at the revenue estimate, it talks very briefly about the, the lodging tax uh, that Minnesota law allows cities and townships to impose a tax of up to 3% on the uh, furnishing of transient lodging. 95% of the revenue must be used to fund a local convention or tourism bureau. And then this provision allows the city of Sleepy Eye to impose an additional lodging tax of up to 2% um, in addition to the other general local lodging tax. My, I, this is a great provision. I think this is a very good thing for Sleepy Eye. Uh, it was requested by Sleepy Eye. It will help them tremendously. That's why they asked for it. Um, and since it's such a good idea, uh, I carried a bill for a similar provision for the city of Woodbury. Uh, but in spite of very strong local support for that issue, the support of Governor Dayton, um, and the, the exact same provision that is there for Sleepy Eye, is not in the bill for Woodbury. Would Senator Chamberlain yield? Senator Chamberlain will, will yield. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam President. I would uh, like to ask Senator Chamberlain why should one Minnesota city be granted the three plus two lodging tax, but not another city, asking for the exact same provision? Hmm. Senator Chamberlain. Madam President, uh, the reason that is, do you, you sure you want to know this, Senator Kent? Because uh, we can we can talk about why this thing was so bad. We we can tell you why it was bad and why it's not in there. Short story: it was a bad uh, provision that Woodbury wanted. Uh, it, well, they were not completely forthright, forthright when they came forward. It's not the typical way we do it. Sleepy Eye fixed it. Then when we fixed it for Woodbury, Madam President. The, they decided they didn't want to go that way. So we offered them the same fix that Sleepy Eye had. They didn't want it. So that's why it's on the bill. So uh, that's the answer, Senator Kent. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam President. Well, that's very interesting because obviously I was not invited to the conversations, but um, I understand from the Commissioner of the Department of Revenue, from members of the, uh, of the tax 
conference committee and uh, the DFL tax team that this is exactly the provision that they were asking for, that they have been exactly asking for the provision that was in, that is included in this bill for, uh, f for Sleepy Eye that should also be made available for Woodbury. But I appreciate Senator Chamberlain's um, putting that information and insight on the record. I will be sure and go back and check and see. Thank you. Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, I cannot uh, retrieve this particular amendment on our computer. I would like to read it before I consider voting one way or the other. I'm sure everyone else who's pulling it up on their computer may be having Madam the same President? problem. Madam President? Yeah. Madam President, it was Sen not an amendment. It was a question. Yeah, and, and I was just oh. about to tell Senator Limber that. All right. I guess that answers the question, doesn't it, Thank Madam you. President? Further discussion on House File 1. Senator Marty. Madam President, I have the A58 amendment at the desk. Senator Marty offers the A58 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Marty moves to amend House File 1 as follows. Page. 8, delete section 2. This is the A58 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam President. Um, members, this amendment would repeal, the, would remove the provisions in the bill that were changing the estate tax. As we were discussing earlier, this does nothing to help farmers or small businesses. It's uh, several hundred people a year, and the Numbers are apparently 35 million this biennium, 75 the next biennium, and 98 million the next biennium. And, and the trend is pretty clear. $100 million a year for a small number of people. And um, this money, it's not like the K-12 budget, E-12 budget could not use another $98 million or 75 million in the next biennium. It's not like we don't need the money. I mean, the personal care attendants, folks who do what we should consider the most valuable job, caring for other people with disabilities, taking care of others, and they're making $11 an hour. And we can't afford to fund the increase for them, which would be covered by this. I urge you to support this amendment um, and ask for a roll call. Roll call has been requested and roll call granted. Further discussion on the A58 amendment. Senator Chamberlain. Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, again, uh, all the amendments that have been offered, nobody has spoke to me about. I have not been, nobody's talked to me about any amendments, so uh, that's first. So any amendments in, that has been offered, nobody has spoke to me directly about it. And if there's other amendments up there, I've not heard from the people, uh, members directly. Secondly, only thing I have to say again is uh, amendment goes on, tax bill dies. Amendment goes on, tax bill dies. We had an agreement. Thank you. So vote no on the amendment. Further discussion on the A58, Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Chamberlain, every amendment that comes up, you say, well, if this goes, it, earlier we were being told they break the agreement. What I was told was that leadership sat down, negotiated big picture items in overall budget and things like that, and it was left to conference committees to negotiate. And as far as I know, I haven't seen anybody who's talked to anybody on a conference committee who put these things together. Some things come in and some things out, and anything you try and change in it is a violation of some agreement that none of us were a party to, leadership was, but they didn't work out every detail of it. Unless I'm wrong about it, I thought they left it for the chairs and others to put together the details. And so suggesting that this is some violation of that is one thing. In terms of not sharing with you, I, I frankly I didn't know what was going to be in the tax bill until it was posted. And frankly, I don't think um, you were sharing anything with us. Senator Chamberlain. A couple of quick items here is. Uh, well, I'm sorry you missed the debate. We had a seven-hour debate the first time the bill came up. We had a fairly lengthy debate when the uh, first uh, conference committee bill came out here. Uh, so I'm sorry you missed that. The spreadsheets were available. It's been posted online. You've been here many, many years, Senator Marty. I'm sure you could find that or have you are able to find those things. And lastly, this, uh, these negotiations uh, between the House and the Senate, uh, their negotiation between the House, the Senate, and the governor's office, the commissioner, we went through this uh, 
uh, bill, spreadsheet, line by line, item by item. It was thoroughly vetted and covered over the last several uh, weeks. It has been available for anybody's viewing. It's been there the whole time. So, um, and in fact, there were more, many members in here voted for the first bill uh, as it went through. So again, vote no. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll on the A58 amendment. Oh, okay. All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 23 ayes and 39 nays, the amendment is not adopted. <laughs> Further discussion on House File 1. Senator Dietzik. Thank you, Madam President. I had brought up the A53 amendment earlier, and this is the one that adjusts the uh, closing times from February 2nd to uh, 2018 through February 5th at 4 a.m. And so I'm bringing that forward and ask for people's support. Senator Dietzik offers the A53 amendment. The secretary will report the amendment. Senator Dietzik moves to amend House File 1 as follows, page 247 after line 10, insert. This is the A53 amendment. Any further discussion to the A53? Senator Dietzik renew, renews her motion on the A53 amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, those opposed, no. No. The amendment is not adopted. And I'm sorry, Senator Chamberlain, I didn't see you. You're tall and back there, but I didn't. Senator Bach. Madam President, division. A, div a division has been called for. All those, oh, S Senator Chamberlain. Madam Ch uh, President, may I speak? I'm sorry. Uh, is this Briefly, problem? sure, because yeah, I missed so it before. I, I was just going to say I support this friendly amendment. This is now a friendly amendment. I support it. So we have had a division called. All in favor, stand up and please remain standing at your desk while we count. All in favor. Thank you. Please be seated. Do you want me to count the no's? There being 59 ayes, the amendment is adopted. Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Members, uh, uh, I want you to know that there was a conversation between the governor, the speaker, myself, and both minority leaders about that particular language. We weren't sure exactly how we would do that with uh, our agreement, but. Uh, we needed to find a place for it, so I just wanted you to know. Further discussion on House File 1. Senator Lurie. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, would Senator Chamberlain yield for a question? Senator Chamberlain will yield. Senator Lorry. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I, I don't have an amendment here, but um, uh, the body may remember when we were first discussing the, the vetoed version of the tax bill conference committee report, or the, the bill going into conference committee, rather. I, I offered an amendment um, to address an Enbridge tax court uh, challenge that uh, is of great importance to 13 northern Minnesota counties, uh, Kittison, Marshall, Polk, Pennington, Red Lake, Clearwater, Beltrami, Hubbard, Cass, Itasca, Aiken, St. Louis, and Carleton County. This runs through the districts of Senator Johnson, Senator Utke, Senator Eichhorn, Senator Rood, Senator Tomasoni, and myself. Um, and a recent Minnesota Supreme Court uh, case actually gives quite a bit of credence to the challenge that Enbridge is bringing. And it has the, the, the serious um, uh, potential to cost these counties tremendous amounts of tax revenues. In fact, two of the counties, uh, Red Lake and Clearwater, the uh, amount at stake is greater than their entire tax levy for the year. Um, and I offered an amendment to try to set some money aside to try to um, bridge some of these counties over in the case of an adverse uh, ruling by the court in this ongoing challenge. And uh, in opposing my amendment, uh, Senator Chamberlain said, uh, Senator Lorry, I'm, I'm way ahead of you on this one. I've been working with folks on this. And um, you know, I, I think we need to find something to do. And so I was looking at the bill, trying to figure out what it is that we may have done to uh, protect our counties from this um, incredibly real and, and incredibly sizable threat to the taxpayers in these, uh, you know, mostly fairly low income communities with low population density. Um, and so, Senator Chamberlain, uh, did we, you know, you, you got way ahead of me on this one. Did you actually figure something out? Is, did I miss something? I couldn't find it in the conference committee report. Maybe you could point to me uh, where that was. Senator Chamberlain. Madam President, Senator Lorry, we're still way ahead of you, okay? Just to satisfy you, we're still way ahead of you. We have talked to Enbridge folks, we've talked to counties. We're aware of the problem. They are working in the court right now. It's not subtle, and it'd be premature to jump in there and do that, but we are working the issue. We're well aware of it, uh, so we're still out there, still ahead of you, and because it's uh, still in the court process, we didn't put anything in the bill. That would be ill-advised. Senator Lorry. Um, Madam President, um, I guess I would just respectfully disagree with the characterization of way ahead of me and disagree with the characterization that it's premature to be acting on this. This case is likely to come to fruition before we come back together uh, uh, in February, and these counties are going to be in a seriously um, dire state. And uh, near as I can tell from the budget that um, we're attempting to get across the finish line, there isn't going to be much wiggle room to try to solve any of these problems at a later date. We're skating right up to the edge of um, all of our uh, financial uh, ability to help uh, communities that are struggling through, uh, through no fault of their own. I, I will just leave it at the fact that these counties were relying on uh, uh, calculations and formulas given them by the Department of Revenue, and I think it is incumbent upon us at the state to uh, make sure that when, they, when counties rely on uh, the, the formulas given them, we should have their backs if, uh, if a court later invalidates them and at the expense of the taxpayers in those counties. So um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I think that the idea that, that you're way ahead of me is uh, not correct. Further discussion on House File, Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, I'd like to offer the A50, A50 amendment.
Senator Dibble offers the A550 amendment. Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Dibble moves to amend Senate File 1 as follows, page 48, after line 18, insert. This is the A50 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And before I forget, I would like to ask for a roll call vote. Roll call requested, roll call granted. So, uh, Madam President, this uh, amendment is similar to the amendment offered earlier by Senator Little. It's a little more comprehensive, though. It deletes um, all of the, uh, uh, the tobacco tax uh, reductions that have been included uh, in the bill. Um, I, I won't belabor the discussion because we've already had a good one, um, other than to say a couple of things. Uh, one is, of course, uh, um, the, uh, the tax cuts for the, uh, the mini cigars came as a surprise uh, to everyone um, and uh, kind of came out of left field as noted by uh, the governor uh, in some of his public statements as well as his, uh, his veto message on, on the tax bill that we had already sent to him. Uh, Madam President, um, I want to um, just uh, quote a couple of uh, very exciting statistics. We have been uh, doing uh, really well as a state, as I said earlier, and uh, I'm looking for looking to uh, uh, a press statement that was made uh, just a few years ago by the Department of Health, and it shows that uh, Minnesota's smoking rate has fallen had fallen at that point. This was a few years ago, so it's gotten even better since then, to 14.4 uh, percent, and it cited uh, many factors uh, that we had taken. Um, but it in particular called out uh, tobacco price increases uh, as one of the factors um, that had, had been very, very successful with the big payoff in the reduction uh, in smoking, included in that were smoke-free smoke policies, cessation programs and media, uh, et cetera. What's, uh, what was uh, especially exciting uh, from that particular study, it's called the MATS study, M-A-T-S, um, the Minnesota Adult Tobacco Survey, um, shows that young adults no longer have the highest smoking rate. Uh, age 20, 18 to 24 dropped from 21.8 to 15.3 percent. They had been the highest uh, smokers in all four previous MAT studies. Um, and so uh, now they're the lowest. Uh, and uh, again, attributable to uh, very, very, very common sense and good steps um, that we had taken as a state. Uh, and here we are, um, suddenly uh, big tobacco has once again reared its head and reasserted itself in, in our state, uh, and uh, they're going to get a big tax break, a big tax cut, uh, and that's a huge disappointment. Um, so, Madam President, uh, I would encourage members to vote for the A50. Thank you. Further discussion on the A50 amendment. Senator Chamberlain. Members vote no. Senator Lori, You know, I, I'd like to say that's incredibly disrespectful to have that um, type of a response for the only opportunity offered to have an actual debate on these budget bills that are being passed, the only opportunity to actually read them, the only opportunity to offer amendments. Every amendment deserves the respect of, of at least a decent answer and, and rationale. And I would respectfully request that we get one, a, a, an answer at least, and a rationale other than uh, no deal. Senator Chamberlain. Uh, Madam President, we spoke at length about this. It was in the uh, conference committee report. We had a long debate on it then. Um, there's nothing new here. Uh, as I said before, an amendment goes on the bill, kills the deal, bill dies. Vote no. Further discussion on the A50. Senator Lemmer. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Senator Dibble, I happened to be in the uh, room in the tax committee at the time this particular provision was considered for inclusion. So I know there was a public discussion about it. 
So I'm kind of curious to understand why it was such a surprise. The other point I have is actually reading your amendment that wipes away Article 9 out of the bill uh, appears to be getting rid of a tax increase on cigarettes. So if you would vote in favor of it, we're going down to a cheaper price on the taxation on cigarettes. I think that kind of goes in the opposite direction of your premise. Senator Dibble. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, but the crux of the, uh, the provision, uh, Madam President, is the fact that the automatic inflator um, that's attached to uh, the, the taxation uh, of cigarettes uh, is deleted, and that was a very powerful provision because, of course, we know that um, the, the, the price of, uh, of cigarettes, um, uh, as inflation uh, has its effect, um, uh, simply inflation kind of surpasses, uh, as we had in the earlier discussion, uh, sending uh, that, that economic signal to folks uh, affecting the, the uh, purchasing decisions, particularly of young people who are particularly price sensitive. Um, and, uh, and that uh, is, is the crux. So there may be uh, a temporary uh, decrease, although I think the way it interacts with the mill rate and all that stuff, I'm not convinced that that, that in fact is the case. But um, nevertheless, the fact that uh, um, kind of the automated inflator is, is deleted, it's repealed, um, is, is the crux of the matter. Um, and uh, and that is a, was a very powerful public policy and public health tool. Further discussion on the A50 amendment. Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll on the A50 amendment. All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 25 ayes and 37 nays, the amendment is not adopted. Point of order, Madam President. Senator Lemmer. During this last roll call, there's staff talking to members while voting is taking place. I think that's clearly against the rules of the Senate. Any voting should be considered separately by members only. Senator Limmer. Thank you for the reminder. I believe we, we did have this discussion sometime in the past. I can't remember what day it was. But um, so thank you for the reminder, Senator Limmer. Further discussion on House File 1. Secretary will give House File 1 its third reading. House File 1, a bill for an act relating to financing and operation of state and local government. Third reading. Any final words? Senator Chamberlain. Thank you, Madam President. Members, just briefly, um, uh, so this is the third, third shot of the bill. It is a negotiated compromise with the governor. We came down $500 million and to meet desires and needs. And he took some of our stuff. We took some of the governor's positions. It is, in the end, still a good bill uh, for seniors, for farmers, for students, for small businesses, for um, um, uh, college students. It is a good bill for everybody in the state. It's a good start, a good change, a good direction. So members, I urge you to vote green on this. It'll be good for the entire state of Minnesota and um, uh, will reap benefits. Thank you very much. 
Secretary will take the roll on House File 1. All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 44 ayes and 20 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.